Last Wednesday at 4.40 a.m., I got robbed. This is that story. Well, what do I do? Like, do I call the cops? Yeah. What's your name, sir? My name is Matt Norloff. Okay, I'm gonna get a deputy to come on in. This was at 4 a.m., 4.40. That one's not where you go. A list of suspects. What? That's Are not, you serious? <sighs> What's up, Team Rar? Today's video is like not one that I wanted to make. This is not something that's very fun. And you guys know me, I love making fun videos. This is definitely not that. Um, so we got robbed. We had people break into the house, steal a bunch of stuff, felony larson, cops, detective. Lots of people are involved on this one. It's, it's really, um, really a serious situation that we're dealing with right now. Uh, we missed one of our uploads recently. Uh, it's been taking up a lot of time. It's been a huge headache. It's been scary. It's been dangerous. And I want to bring you guys up to speed on everything that we're going through right now and the whole story of exactly what is going on. So this video is going to be this story of what we've been going through the past couple of days. What all started on a regular Wednesday, we woke up, we're getting the cameras ready, we're ready to go out and start like filming a fun video. I get a strange text where Matt's like, yo, where's my ATV? And he sounded pissed and Matt never gets mad. And so that is when we figured, hey, something might not be right. Let's put like the vlog cameras down and let's go like look at the security cameras. And that is when our stomachs tied into a knot and we were like, OMG. Did they take anything else? That's all that I see that's missing right now. Luckily, they left some of the more expensive stuff in there, but that thing wasn't cheap. Why wasn't that one door locked? I just haven't been really talking things. So Wait, what? How did they, they just take your ATV? Well, what do I do? Like, do I call the cops? Yeah, um, call the cops. I mean, what else would have been, could have been stolen? Maybe just took the ATV and left. They probably didn't yeah, have trailer yeah. space to Is take other stuff. Is there a video of going out of the garage? Yeah. Is there a video of going out of the garage and driving away in that or what they're... Can we download those clips? Mm-hmm. What? Are you serious? Dude, what? You can kind of see them though. Yeah, right you there. could. That's the only clip we got, really. Are right you there. serious? Dude, that was like a $6,000 ATV. Like, uh, I was gonna sell it to him too. What can I, like, I don't even know what to do. That means they brought a truck. How did that and then their bottleneck is that? just how much they can fit on their truck. Like, is my dirt bike still here? Like, oh, what else is missing? Gone. Are you serious? 100%. Yeah, it's not there. But it was parked next to my Raptor. Yamaha's gone. After seeing that footage, that's when we started to realize the ATV is definitely missing. Where is Liz's dirt bike? And what else might be missing, broken, or completely messed with? That's when we decided to pick up the phone and call the cops. What's your name, sir? My name is Matt Norloff. Okay, I'm gonna get a deputy to come on in a uh, couple minutes so they can take a look at it. Uh, surveillance also, okay? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Matt's on the phone with the police filing a police report. My first instinct is like, who stole from us? Maybe it's someone that lives like one of the neighbors. So Liz, Andrew, and I, we hopped in the car and we just kind of did a lap. We just wanted to like snoop around, just see what's going on, and just maybe we would find something. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Yeah. We got uh, robbed last night. This morning, 4 a.m., two dudes came in, got an ATV stolen this morning, and a little dirt bike. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. I'll try it out. Yeah. You've never had anyone steal anything? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Meanwhile, the cops finally showed up and Matt started talking with them and walking them through exactly what we thought happened, which was there's at least one ATV stolen and we don't know what else. So this was at 4 a.m., 4.40. Push your eyebrows is one thing I can notice, but this guy's got more features. You can it's see him. He's got red. You know, dreads, like a lot of hair in the back. Try and go back, see if you can see their hands or if they were wearing gloves. Oh, that one's not wearing gloves. Yeah, I don't think either of them had gloves. This police officer was incredible. He was so amazingly helpful, fast to respond, and he even brought a fingerprint dust kit, which is like something out of the movies, and he started dusting for fingerprints to see if we could peel like a thumbprint or something and then scan it into the system. I mean, it blew my mind what he was able to help us with. This is our best bet. Is this got unlocked? I can't touch it, but you pull it that way, and if there's a thumbprint or fingerprint and his fingers are in the system, that would be a way to 
catch who did this. It should be definitely crazy. definitely is not their first time either. Yeah. You know They're what I mean? So they might be in the system. We wrapped up with the police and here is what we know at this point. Matt's ATV, a Yamaha Raptor, was stolen and worth about $8,000. Liz's dirt bike also got stolen and that was worth a few thousand dollars as well. We don't really know what else happened since we didn't have footage inside the garage, but we're gonna continue to search. Later that night, I get a text from Andrew, and he thinks that he might have found the guy who robbed us. We don't have a lot of information to go off, but this screenshot here of the guy who broke in shows that he is a skinny tall guy with like black dreads that come down about shoulder length. And this guy working at the restaurant seems to fit the description, but it's hard to say. Being recently robbed, we're pretty on edge, and we're willing to go talk to anybody and just try to learn any information. So we drove over to the restaurant to talk to the manager and just feel things out just to see what might be up. We're just gonna be trying to collect as much information, be detective. We're looking for evidence, yeah. And we're gonna see if uh, we can just find these ATVs and dirt bikes. We're operating our investigation off of one of two possibilities. The first possibility is that these guys are long gone, they're not from the town, they're not from the area, no leads, nothing, it's not possible. That's not what we're going on. We're thinking, statistically speaking, what happened last night was due to someone who lived in what we believe is probably a 15 minute radius of here. I think that most crimes like this happen a lot closer than you think, and sometimes it's even like a close neighbor. So we're gonna be exploring the town, just kind of driving around, scoping it out, just see what we can see. See if there's anything at all to learn. There might be nothing, but I think it's worth kind of cruising around town late at night and just see if anything looks interesting to us. Pull it right here. I wanna see if Dreads is still here. Is that Dreads? I need to get a front profile of his face. I just feel like he's working in a part right now, and I don't see a guy working in a part role doing some kind of theft like this. We staked out the restaurant like true detectives. We waited for it to close and the manager to come out so we could ask him a few questions just to see what's up. Yeah, we got two Wait. guys roll up on us last night. Stole an ATV and a dirt bike at 4 a.m. this morning. So just kind of yeah. screen grabs. We have two guys, this dude, and then there's this guy. I don't think it'd be him. I've known yeah. him for about a year, over a year now. Really, I appreciate your help. Based off what the manager says, I believe him. I don't think the guy working there had anything at all to do with the crime, but it was worth asking and exploring our options. But now we're back to the drive board and just waiting to see what the detective has to say. The next morning, Liz and I are on the way to the airport because we have a wedding to go to, which is a little unfortunate because we're so on edge. And Matt's driving and he gets a call from the police department detective saying that he has potential suspects. We have suspects on the ground at the premises at a certain date and time. Um, I was at the house. Two friends who I live with were there. So what was he trying to say? He has a plan. Well, he has like a, he's got a list of suspects that were nearby and That's seemed to meet cool. the description no. based on phones and he saw. GPS so that now is. he's going to look at our footage and the exact time <laughs> that they were there and see if it lines up. And if it does, we might have some people to go That's knock on the door of. That's crazy. That's crazy. Unfortunately, Liz and I have to literally catch a flight. We're leaving the state, so it's gonna be really hard to continue this detective work. But Matt and Andrew are gonna be on the ground and continue working with the cops as they come back over to the team our house today. As you would imagine, all the neighbors were asleep at 440 and didn't hear or see anything except for one neighbor. He said he actually saw the robbery take place and he agreed to come here to the team our house to do an exclusive interview as long as we keep his identity private. So I get up pretty early uh, to head into Raleigh for work. Uh, it's around uh, 435, 440 or so. I'm pulling out of uh, our neighborhood and I take a right and I see a car in the middle of the road with no lights on. Uh, and then I uh, see the brake lights start to tap on it like they're hitting the brakes or trying to get it into gear. And then the car takes off pretty slow. It was kind of unusual for me, so I flick my brakes on and I kind of catch up to that car. But as I'm catching up to that car, I notice that there's a truck on the side of the road uh, with a little heat u-haul trailer on it but i continue following this car it looks like they're trying to find a place to turn around they're not really driving but they're sort of just going down the road sort of slow so i'm right up behind it and uh, all of a sudden he slams on the brakes turns the blinker on like they're going to turn into a, a house but they don't actually turn they just kind of stay in the middle of the road waiting for me to go around but it was very suspicious to me so i just stayed right there with my bright lights on them uh, and actually picked up my phone and made sure the screen was illuminated so it looked like i was calling or recording them 
him. And then the car starts to pull off into the drive a little bit more. And uh, I actually go on around it. And then I actually stop and kind of watch what the car did after I pulled past it. And it did a turn in the road and then went back up to where the truck and the U-Haul trailer were off the side of the road. And about what time did you see all that happen? I left my house at probably 4.35. And by the time I pulled onto it was right about 4.40. The police has 23 different suspects of who could have robbed us, so it's just a matter of time before we track them down and find out exactly who it was. Matt is the most upset about this whole situation, so to try to help him make him feel better, we created this merch that's available on tmar.com right now. All of the proceeds and all of the profits generated from the sales of these shirts are going to be going to buying Matt a new ATV, and if we could sell enough shirts, we're going to surprise him with one in the next video. As for now, the robbers are still at large, but we will find them, so stay tuned on this channel for any more updates of this, and we'll see you guys in the next vlog. Peace! Thank <laughs> you.